So now I want to make sure that you all know that I know that even between us Latinos, we all have different cultures, right? Like there, some of the things I celebrate, some of the things I do, some of my beliefs are different from my Puerto Rican friend. One of my best friends is Puerto Rican. She thinks about things slightly different. Yes. And I have an Equatorian friend who does things differently and their moms talk differently. So like, I'm, I don't want to put this blanket statement and say like, we all Latinas are the same. That's not my goal. I'm just trying to like put together some similarities between all of us to help us at least start with the baseline. Because after this baseline is curiosity, which is always important. And I'm not saying that Latinos are, you know, like, oh, you, you all need to figure this out because Latinos are so hard. No, I, what I'm saying is that, as you can see from the stats that I mentioned, like there are a lot of Latinos struggling and they need services, but they're not engaging in services. And when things are said and done and there's research conducted and all that fancy stuff, what comes out is that we are failing to engage Latinos in a sensitive way in a way that feels applicable and respectful. So that's why I think we need to start from the bottom and say like, all right, how can I provide care in a way that a Latino kid or a family is going to feel supported by me, which is going to help me or open the door for me to help them learn how to be supportive to each other. So are you going to leave here and be like, oh, I'm totally, you know, culturally competent? Never. You're never going to be culturally competent because you never get there. You have to continue to work on that, continue evolving. So that's why I like better to say, um, you know, instead of culturally competency, I say um, culturally affirming because you're like making sure that you, okay, so hold on, let me go to the next slide. So cultural humility, this is where we all are going to start today. Like we need to understand where are patients coming from and how do you do this? By being curious. You don't assume, like I'm saying right now, I'm, I'm pulling a lot of things that are in common that we all share in common in a way, but I would never advise you to go into a therapy session with a Salvadorian family and just pretend you can just use everything I'm telling you today without being curious. You can use it as a baseline. This is really important. But, you know, you want to learn about your patient's values. Are they religious? What do they believe in? And then when you know all of this, when you have um, humility and you've taken the time to, to know, like, hey, I don't know everything. I learn from all of my families and I'm curious, then you can be culturally sensitive or affirming. Some people still call it competency, but like you can be responsive in a way where you, you start to take some of the things that you've learned from the family and you incorporate them into your interventions. I hope that makes sense. So you start to learn to adjust the way you work with a regular family by learning what they value, what they believe in, not being scared of what they believe in, but like using it as a way for, for them to feel understood and engaged in treatment.